This is Muta Baruka. We want to present to you a wholesome kind of level of consciousness right now. So subscribe and tell your friend them. This is Muta Baruka. All right, like how we have you on the, 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 the phone here. There's a case last week of a youth in Woolmans. Oh, I don't know if you hear about it. The case is that the youth go to school with him here, the two sides them kind of chair blue on the top. And the, the, the principal say, him can't come to school with him here looking like that. And him send for him mother and the mother come back and the, 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 according to the mother, the principal said to her, it's film school and him running the school or him want to run it and nobody can tell him nothing. Him not allowing back the youth in the school. You hear that? You hear about that? So tell me you're about that from you. Yeah, now. man, a whole man's man, a whole man's The youth, you know them youth that cut off, like, the two yeah, sides so lower than the top. Is that style now? Yes. And yes. them say the youth can't come in at the school unless him, 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 him fix him here right. This yes. is right after the, the government say, you, you must discriminate against a youth because of him here. Yet you have youth in at the school, half Chinese, Chinese, Indian, with them ear long gone up on them shoulder and all them something there. Yes. Oh, I um, see never hear about it. It's a serious thing. No, I never hear about it. But now that you have brought to my attention, if, if and when the parents or the youth get in touch with me, I'd certainly do something about it. Because Wilma is, is one of my alma maters. Yes, yes, you yes. Know, and, and we did a lot of work at Wilma at the boys' school. At the girls' school, at the prep school, where a lot of my children went to, um, in, 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 in mashing down through Babylon behavior. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was. The, so the, when I, he was master now, and it, it, we, we got to put him in his place because we have put other headmasters in their place to realize the rights of the children. So, I think I think it's almost personal. Yes. That yes. We must should be that way. But you know, I, I, I. Okay. So. You know, we have not been hearing about Nzinga. You know, that data that was the, the police cut off her laps in the cell. We have not been hearing much about her, and her case is still there. Um, I don't think it's Isaac Buchanan representing her again, but we have the person who is representing her to give us an update, because I know she's supposed to go court this month. I don't know what takes place, but... Miguel Lance, suppose you can tell you and give us an update exactly what is going on. Blessed? Yeah, you know. Oh, you do? Yes, give time. Give time. Yeah, man. No, I said Buchanan is still representing her. Uh, um, so he came along along with me on the 12th of September to the court in Mayfair where she gave evidence. Oh, oh. I him referred me to you still. That's yeah. I, didn't feel, say, it's, it's, I don't know, you know, but he, 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 he is he, he's very much involved. I, I'm, I'm making sure that he's staying involved. All right, okay. All right, so what is happening now? What, why is it that the, yes. uh, she's in court since September? Yes, she's in court now on the 12th of September. Um, she would, the policeman gave evidence, you know, and he said I will put in, and, um, no case submissions were made. The judge still ruled that Enzinga has to explain her side of the story. And she did that on the 12th. She did, did, gave her evidence very, very good. Very good. She explained herself very well. And I, I thought very remarkable. And um, the judge has reserved her judgment until I think it is the uh, 22nd of November. All right, well, well, Miguel, um, yes. people here are talking, and we know there was a thing that most people that say, but wait, that case never is done. What is it that she's in court for? Because a lot of people had the impression that the case is over, signed, sealed, and delivered. What is it that lead up to this? What, what, what is she giving arguments she, about? She, she, she's in court. She was charged for not wearing a mask. That is what the officer said that she did not have on a mask on the day that he saw her. Her evidence was that she was wearing a mask, but when the officer pepper sprayed a man who was in front of the taxi, the pepper spray affected her and other persons who were in the taxi. So when they came out of the taxi, 
they had to take off their mask. That was her evidence. And um, she gave that evidence that the only time she took off her a mask was when the officer pepper sprayed inside the taxi. Yeah. And that's what the case is all about. That she's ruled, um, that she's charged for not wearing a mask. It's, it's ironical that nowhere a mask is completely. Um, not that wide. Yes. yes. Uh, and and uh, um, when we're right to know and realize that in most cases the mask sent because it was not anything. But because of the of what happened when they took her to the Philippines police station and because that matter now is a bigger matter when um, her, her locks were stringed and all of that and we have had two reports one from the DPP the other from the public defender and two opposite reports yes. the DPP blame her the public defender exonerated her so we have that and the matter um, is being prepared to go before the civil court yes. for breach of her constitutional rights. But uh, so because of all those issues now, the prosecution don't want to drop the case, and we are insisting that we we don't we are going to fight it to the last, and we are going to make sure she's acquitted. Yeah, yeah. All right. So what what transpired in the the the, the, the courthouse? Give me the, the, the blow by blow what, description, description. All right. What transpired in the courthouse is that the officer said, said he saw her walking along the road and she did not want to ask. And when he spoke to her, she gave in an outrageous manner and called him names and so on and so forth. You must see the officer. The officer is a, is a way over a 250 pound man. The other policemen there, and the officer, this little girl, um, in Zinga, weigh about a hundred, oh. a hundred and less than a hundred and ten pounds. Yes. And yet the man, the man admitted that he had to pepper spray her in order to restrain her, which yes. was kind of very strange, very very strange. Um, you know that officers were there, more than one. And they had to pepper spray her in order to restrain her. But that is your evidence. And the guy say, no, no, I was not walking along the road. I was in a taxi when you pepper sprayed the man that was in the front of the taxi who you wanted to get out and the man wasn't coming out of the taxi. You had a problem with that man and when you pepper sprayed the man and so caused all of us in a taxi. I used to burn us and many discomforts including myself yeah. and I, I I was very angry she said that and I remonstrated with you all and that was why you were all vexed and why you, you took the man the, 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 the key to this case now is that they took the man to the police station and they also took Nzinga to the police station mm. Mm. And, and now you said the judge said the judge said what? She will give her decision. Having heard all the evidence, she will give her decision. I think it's about it. Um, I, w- I want to... Uh, just pass my diary for me. I want to give you the accurate date yeah. because we don't want people to win. We want as much people to come to court. Come to court. Um, and I have my diary here now. It's um, in November... Um, yeah, the 14th of November. The 14th, okay. Tuesday, the 14th of November. That is the day when the judge is going to give her decision in the matter. All right, the judge is going to give the decision that what? She's guilty of not wearing masks or the police yeah. was guilty of pepper spraying the people? It, 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 she's guilty of, uh, well, it's either she's guilty or not guilty of wearing a mask on that day. <laughs> it's all weird, you know, because I want uh, how much year, what, over a year now, and a mask case still a going in at the court to wear or not to wear. Come here, then. Two years, and it, yeah, it's sound really weird. And therefore, that makes it sound very spicy. 
spiteful. Yes, yes. In other words, they just tighten the rest of the community because of what took place and because of the outcry against it, of what took place at the full part police station. Yes, it's yes. It's very malicious and it shows, um, it, it, it shows, the, the more they fight her, the more it shows malice yes. on the part of the prosecution, including, including eh, Paula Lowell, the director of public prosecution. Yeah. Also, she not on her part because she wrote a report in this matter, which, is, which was very prejudicial, prejudicial to ending the king. Yeah. And to, to have written such a report in the middle of the case, in the middle of the case, that yeah. itself, in other words, the, the case was what you will call subdued it. And she wrote a report which blamed ending the all was saying even being a cut off for one year. <laughs> you know? Yes, very malicious, which yeah. the public defender find no such nonsense and say we must proceed with civil case. So, we, we definitely plan to, myself and Brother Isaac, to sue the, um, the government for the atrocities against this young lady. Yes, yes. And, I, and my question was, all right, so if a teacher continue to persecute a student for that, what will be the consequence to the teacher? Because you can't say a child must be persecuted because him, him, him have laps, or him, or him have him hearing or whatsoever, or a sister of hearing or Afro can know. But if the government is serious and a child goes to school and is still being persecuted, what is the consequence to the teacher for perpetuating this madness against students? We don't hear them say nothing about the consequence to the, to the teacher. In other words, they have to, the ministry have to follow and impose sanction yes. against the teacher. that teacher, that principal. And if you don't impose sanction, they'll continue to behave like that. Of course, of got, course. You have got to impose some sort of sanction against the principal, against the teacher, for depriving the children of the possibility of learning. That's the important thing. Yeah. I did a matter some years ago, about 20 years ago, when a particular school refused to accept a drug box to a far right child. And I wrote the ministry and demanded that the ministry send somebody to the school. And the ministry did that. They sent a chief education officer to the school and let the school know because, you know, all these schools are supposed to be really a school, but they get most of their money from the government. Yes. And the chief education officer threatened that principal of that school and said, if you don't take a child, we, the government, is going to cut off the subvention that we give your school. Yes. And yes. it was so much that they had to take a child and the child finished education. Yes. So yes. unless the government ministry said, tell more schools that. Yes. Consequence. That, yes. And not only that, serious consequences too. Yes. That yeah. we are going to cut off your subvention because if you're a church school, then make the church finance you. Don't have other taxpayers' money financing you, and then you do what you like. No, you have to do what we, we say, yeah. and so yeah. on. So All right. I find I find the government at this time very weak, very weak. Right, but you cannot leave that decision up to principals, up to school board, yeah. and those people. You, you the government, must. Make yes. a policy decision. Step in, and yes. Tell the school what to do, not to yes. leave it up to the school. Yes. Very because I imagine very that very just very happened a little before school opened, and now just one week after the school opened, we hear this come up again about here. Yes. And this is not a lot, said man. This is not a dreadlock view. Yes. You know, so, you know, what is what is the argument about, you know? Yes. Anyway, we we'll give the, thanks. The, 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 again, I say that the print. The Ministry of Education must take a stand and and um, direct that stand to all schools in Jamaica. Yes, yes, yes. That they must know that because relatives will still do that and um, principals will still be a certain way because a lot of these schools are in fact church schools, you know. Yes, of course. Yes. A lot of people don't know it's church schools. And as a result of that, the actual members of the board they actually stipulate in the rules of some of these church schools that a majority on the board must be from the church. Mm. And 
you know, once church people involved, it becomes a religious argument. Of course, of course. It's not an educational argument anymore. It's a religious argument. Yeah, you, most, I, you know, most of, those, most of those teachers, especially the female teachers, them, if you hear no press down and cream down by your head, them not see it as something acceptable. <laughs> so right. Yes. Anyway, yes. we give thanks, Bertrand. Give thanks. Yeah, man. We have to continue the fight, Mutter. Give of thanks. Of course. You know? Yes, give yes. thanks. Good. Good. Yeah, that was uh, Miguel Lan talking about the continuous case with Enzinga, that sister that I hear was cut off in the, in the cell by a police woman. And the rule it, that is almost like the man said she cut it off. And she's still in the court now because them cases she never have on a mask almost two years after the mask thing still did it over the sister head. Them say she never have on a mask so they might charge her for not having on a mask. And she said the reason why she take off the mask is because the police sprayed about the car which she did in her. So we're going to see what will happen. I think the version said November, we're going to see what happened. Hey, hush, I saw them stay. <laughs> I saw them see Aisha, believe you me. So, I don't, <clears throat> don't know much want to see this video of the hospital where a woman, it looked like a woman, somebody black, somebody car, and fight broke out between the woman and the other woman. And then, when you look on the video, you see a fight a broke out. You know that same video there? <laughs> It's a Jamaica now. Jamaica reach a stage where it's just crude and ignorant and all the behavior them where you can't find. Nobody know how to deal with no how you resolve conflict without violence. Nobody nobody know how to deal with that. Everybody does feel say from you get this is a violent response you have to take. And we see the violence response only a lead to death and destruction. And more death and destruction. I don't know, you have violence, like for instance, Trinidad, you have Holy well, murder I go on in a Trinidad, but the, the behavior, what we see I go on in a Jamaica, you know, as it relates to how people respond to each other. Even on the street, we see a video where a, a, a brother come on a stage and push off and next one off on the stage. Just like that, just, just come on and just push him off. Dreadlocks brother too. Now that leave the one who get push off to respond. And then film for never respond. So it's like the cycle of craziness keep going on. I will not say really and truly, it'll damage everything. It'll damage everything. Every day, every every little corner you turn now, you hear of somebody missing you hear of somebody that killed somebody because of some dispute and it goes on and on or which reaches so or which reach a stage where a man can't say sorry to the next one again it, 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 it like it be on him to say sorry it be on him to apologize to a brethren or a sister or vice versa. Because we reach a level of crudeness, you know. And you can't see it in the behavior of the people, them, as they relate to one another upon the road. You know, where you tell one to go do with the mother, where you tell say you would do him if he didn't have gone, where you would do him. And people carry it out. It's not like say I want to joke again. You know, when a man tells you, why, me kill you, you know, boy, don't take him like a joke, you know, man. I don't joke. Because the brain, no, it looks like everybody's brain gets wired a different way. People upon the street, I don't know if it's after the COVID, this is happening. I don't know if it's the food where they might feed the people, them. Are just total frustration and feeling neglect, neglected. Total frustration. 
Because everybody seems to get frustrated. Everybody gets frustrated nowadays. The, 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 the pressure of daily living take hold of everybody. And when you hear the, the, the people them talk about what is going good and what is going good, you wonder what is happening. Because the people them stay in this situation. How can something be going good and all right and the best it ever be? If I spend them, take power and families and that. Yet still the frustration and the craziness amongst the people them is so terrible. And even though we say crime increase in our whole heap of Caribbean island. We are talking about like St. Vincent. We are talking about like St. Lucia. We are talking about like Trinidad. The, 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 the crudeness, the behavior of the people them in Jamaica seem to go beyond normal behavior. Every day you look at your seat. Whether I'm on a drive, whether I'm on a walk, I mean, it, it just is like no one, no, I have no respect for no one again. Anything goes. You just tell a man anything where you want to tell him. And the repercussions is that I'm going to turn around and draft your knife or a gun. And that's the end of that. So you think? It, it's weird, man. So I wonder now, I think it might say for that, say what weird. There's so much things that go on. You know, you lock down the people, them. Them get to come out and then now they might take. They might take revenge upon where they're the So you have more parties. You have more pressure upon young girls. You have incest increase. Stepfather have relations with stepdaughter. And it, it just keeps going on and on, more and more. But now we come out of it. We are talking about the COVID era, we are talking about. We come out of it. And now we say, we are wondering how the food, the food, me not cross out, say, the food not create a level of craziness that the people them. Because when you see the youth, them all are drive. We are not talking about the taxi man them now. Because even the taxi man them are youth still, but... We are talking about the, the youth, them. We don't even reach 35, 40 year old yet. And them are called youth. And most of them are dead. To be honest with you, I mean, any youth who listen to me now, we're in our 30s. Most ones where a good all listen to me now have a brethren or a sister who are dead. Whether in a car accident or if somebody gets shot or stabbed. Why so much youth are dead? There's something that is happening that we still don't put a finger upon. For no, say, why well, this is where I cause this thing, you know, because people don't just get up overnight, so I just get wicked. It's a process. It's a process. Where the psychologists them there? Where the psychologists them that study these things? You know, because they... The, 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 the government feels say uh, the crime rate is gang related, which we're not gonna tell them no. But as uh, some youth in the gang them and them get wicked and wicked. Them get terrible. But them say them have it under control. Up to oh, the day before yesterday I get to the we get the Prime Minister say them have it is because them them, them try to use the statistics. To make you feel comfortable, which is an illusion. It's a total illusion. You keep comparing last year with this year and say last year was worse. I don't feel when, when I walk down the street where I talk to people, I don't feel I don't feel say this year better as it relates to crime and murder. I don't know which Jamaican feel like, well, the Prime Minister said murder gone down and all them something there. I feel better. No, I don't say feel better going on. Feel better is that you have to feel better. You know, a man can't come to you. Poison. And you don't know. And then when him turn on him, say, Boy, I make me give you poison, you know, but you soon feel better. Feel better is feel better, man. 
And most Jamaicans now feel good. Especially with the, the crime business where I go on, but the government wants you to feel better. By not doing anything, or train them doing something, but not getting the result that is necessary to make people feel better. You know, all them equipment for them to them have now, and the police are surveillance, this and surveillance, that. All of them think they still don't add up to feel better. We want to feel better after. We live in our country where it's one of the most. I mean, when you look on the, the, the ambience of Jamaica, when you look on the, 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 the water, when you're in a plane and you land in a Montego Bay, and you see the water, and you look at the mountainside, we have too much things that go for away to make the thing get away here. Yeah. People look on Jamaica as the capital of the Caribbean. People look on outside of Jamaica. People, more, watch out. One of the well, you have some people that are out, out there you now. They talk about in Africa and in Europe. They must say one of them greatest wish is to come to Jamaica. That is what they must say one of them greatest wish is to come to Jamaica. The reason why they want to come to Jamaica is because they hear about so much good things then about Jamaica. Because why they, why they want to come to Jamaica is, is what was taking place in Jamaica then. Not now, because right now, we are taking place that Jamaica just start soaking in a whole heap of people, you know. Especially the Jamaican, they are foreign. It starts to soak into them now, say, oh, me not go back to Jamaica, sir. Too much murder down there. But you see the people, them who no, 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 no follow Jamaica and, and them family, I, I report to them. With them, I say, boy, right now, they, in, a, they, in a few them mind, Jamaica is paradise. Them people, they will not have no Jamaican connection. To them, Jamaica is paradise still. But we live as so we realize eh, that paradise where we are talking about is an illusion right now. It's an illusion right now. And it needs to fix. It needs to fix. There's certain things that is causing it to propel out of control. And it don't come down out of control already. Talking about the attitudes and behavior of Jamaican people and how it affects everybody, especially the crime wave we have passed through. You know, it's like, it's like when we look, when we hear the people in my talk, it's like, they don't understand how the thing can solve. Why is it that the thing can solve? Why does it go on and on and on and on and so? And the thing we're at, the thing we're born people, is that them a come on the TV and I, and, I, and I tell you how the thing I go down in the last what how much hey me can't be talking to you know, my mouth that piss up you know because some vexation come on that you say what we why them a tell the people them say last year them time yeah there was more murders me why hear that? Me don't want to hear say last year them time and there was world more murder. Me concern that right now. Me see too much murder go on. And me want it, it cease. Because you, you, you can't stop murder anywhere in the world, but I mean a little island with like 3,000 people, man. The other day we had look on the, 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 the murder rate in a 80. A 2,000 people murdered in a 80. And the population of Haiti had 10,000. Check that. The population of Haiti, sorry, 10 million, sorry, sorry, see? The population of Haiti is 10 million. And in a one year, you have 2,000 people dead, murdered. In a Jamaica, the population is 3 million. And last year, you have 1,000 odd people murdered. What kind of thing that? And put point of point, 18 a crisis. 18 a crisis, they want to sell with it. And the belief say it's gang that kill people and gang this and gang that. When we know say whole heap of them think there's collateral damage because I know I know the people them the people the, the, the people them after. They think I the people them the people them after. 
And the criminals, they will take over them country from foreign. The French and the American, them. And sometimes you can't catch quack, them say so you catch him shot. Three million people, them say in Jamaica. And we have over a thousand murders. Let me say you talk about three people. Three people to one. <laughs> three to one. What kind of thing that? What we're we supposed to feel good about? Is that looking to me at a little stage show them around up and all over the place and new restaurant are open. People can go have dinner and restaurant and all these things and you know you can't live certain life. Even in your ghetto, you have people who have street down and them turn up them soul in the street and I play music right at the bar edge them and all them something there. And that I see of Jamaica, you know. To, to really go down deep and deep in the abyss, you know. The people them are trying to find them way out by using any means necessary to relieve themselves of the madness where take place. Where well, the politicians them can alleviate the problem. But yet till them attack and attack and attack. The yeah, man are threaten the people them know and I say, people like all, well them not say like all like, like me, but people like all me you now is like we are we are conjure up things in other people them. I was talking to Devon Taylor about the the madness, the Don Juva, Lico Don Juva argument. Where them lock out the public out at the beach. A beach that has been bringing joy to thousands of Jamaicans. And the beach has been locked from last year or the year before. Because somebody killed somebody outside. Not on the beach, outside. So today was a court case in St. Anne. We want to talk back to the bridge who was talking to Devon. I hope he's even up on the line, Devon Taylor. Fire yeah, out what took place in the courthouse today. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, man. <laughs> give thanks, give thanks. Good afternoon, Mova. Big respect to all of your listeners, Devon to Jamaica. Yeah. So, Little Duns River um, community, you know, I mean, and the Jamaican public got your first day in court today against UDC, which is in fact the Jamaica government. So um, that was a that was a great accomplishment that the community was able to drag them in front of the court. You know what I mean? You know to start the whole thing. So what really transpired today is kind of like what they would call like a mention. You know the case yes, was yes. called up by the judge. Yeah. You know what I mean? The judge did a roll call to make sure all of the plaintiffs and the defendants were there. You know what I mean? And give thanks all of the ten plaintiffs. You know, from the Little Guns River community, including the Jamaica Beach Bird Right Environmental Movement, was present. I mean, what the judge did after that is the judge set another date, which is the November the 24th of this year. The judge asked them to now ask everyone to come back to the court now. All right? And so they are going back to the court now, the 24th of November, where, you know, the judge will give now the lawyers on both sides an opportunity now to discuss the merit of the case. Yes. You know what I mean? And talk about, you know, all of the next steps. So it's another form like of, of administrative thing where yes. they discuss first the merit of the case and determine what they need to bring forward. And then the judge kind of sets some dates now where they really get into the matter. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, all right. In a, in, a, yes. in a five minutes, for those of you, those are the people who don't know what you're talking about and was listening last night. And don't listen to Andrea because, sorry, Cabo, Cabo has been at this case for almost time now, how long now. And we see Ghana a courthouse now, so we give thanks for Cabo to keep at it. Yes, keep at it. What is it that is happening? Tell the people them about this Donjova, little Donjova case. What, what, what is going on? Tell me. So, yes, so what is really going on is that Jamaicans have been displaced from Little Downs River. The ones there who conduct their business have been displaced. The public who uses it for recreation, for spiritual, um, you know, healing, therapeutic, they have been displaced. And the displacement happened because, as the, I mentioned, there was a murder that happened outside on the road 
and they shut the beach down and said they're going to run an investigation. Now, after 12 months, them still don't open the place yet. They have not given the Jamaican people a reason why it's staying closed. You know what I mean? But the JCF instructed the, the, the UDC to come in and shut it down. And the UDC basically closed the gate and saying things like, you know what I mean, they never really have the, the, the necessary, um, you know, permits or sanitations or the like to really um, operate the space. So it shifts from an investigation into a homicide, you know, to some other reason being laid there. Despite for six, from 1960s, you know what I mean, when the space was set up, Jamaica enjoyed this feature. And before such time, you know what I mean? And so Jamaica deserves the need to continue to enjoy this space, but have been locked out, in effect, by the government of Jamaica. And so the community now have to take the government to court to really regain their access rights under what we call the prescriptive law of 1882, um, which says that if you use a space for more than 20 years, then you deserve the right to continue to use it in perpetuity forever. And so that is what we want to establish before the courts, that the Jamaican public have the right to access Little Duns River. And that's what we're fighting for. Just simple that, simple that. Just access. Yes, sir. Just simple that. We're not trying to build... We look nightclub on the, the, the beach. Just want no. access to beer no. and have fun. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's it. You know, so you said the court case will be the 24th of November, you said? 24th of November, 2022. We're going back down there. We had a, we had a nice little crowd come out and I give thanks to uh, the ones that, that comes out and support. You know, we do see a little awakening happening. We need, you know, we need a bigger awakening. You know, the media was present there. You know what I mean? Um, one of the things worth mentioning, it is routine for the judge to ask the attorneys them if they can settle this thing outside of the court, then it is best. So, um, you know, that, that was said to both sides of attorneys. If you can reach a settlement outside of the court, then you can go ahead and do it. Now, I would say that... No, well, 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 what, what is the government arguing about the beach? What them say about why? What them saying? Well, 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 uh, in I know the people they want it open, but what the government saying they want it closed? Skip, up? No, the government has not said anything. Okay, but what the government has been doing, which is action speak louder than word, is the government have been selling lands that are owned by the commission of land, are owned by the government to private interests. Okay, yeah. and in so doing, under Jamaican law, that private interest can fence the property and block the public out, okay? Mm -hmm. So the government right now is not really advocating, is not really providing access and easement across lands for Jamaicans to get to the beach. And so we're having a problem with our own government because they are part of the problem why Jamaicans don't have free and, you know, unfettered okay. and general rights of access. I am putting it to you that there, there is some deal going on with a private company and for that beach to be transformed, just like the same Bob Marley thing. There's some deal with the government that hotel round on the side of the Bob Marley beach. They're going to put up big hotel. Thanks for the eye to give us the opportunity to really hear these things out into the public. You yes. know what I mean? That's saying that Jamaicans need to be, you know, advocates. We need to defend our rights. Because, you know, nobody can own the sea. Nobody can own the beaches. Okay? These yes. are treasures of the land. And if they are treasures from the land, then the people of the country must have access to them. Yes. And what we do see happening, and as we mentioned first night, there are more than 275 leases that have been given to villas and hotels and guest houses and private um, interests across the island. Okay, and these exclude Jamaicans from accessing these space unless you can pay five hundred dollar and one thousand dollar a night. You can check in a hotel, check in a villa, and then you can use the space. And that is unacceptable and madness. And as the I point, um, pointed out last night, wall below it in the sea, so you can't even freely. Yeah, man, you have hotel where I've been wall in the sea. How is that possible? Oh, oh that legal, that legal version. You know, these things we need to start challenge in court. But one of the things where 
the government do, right? So you will see some, so you will see cottage a billion at the sea. How can a cottage billion at the sea <laughs> if the government don't give them uh, the permit? If and the Bilbo. government don't give them a lease? Huh? The government it, is complicit in the problem. Of course, of course, of course. Of course. And we cannot, we, we cannot operate like that as a, as a, as a nation. You know what I mean? These are the treasures that everybody is supposed to enjoy. You're supposed to enjoy your river and your river bank them. You're supposed to enjoy your sea and your seaside them. You know what I mean? Ear. And the ear. And the ear. And there are economic opportunities indeed for the larger Jamaica. Instead, it has been shut down only to what? The oligarchs and the rich. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, they can't continue motor. No, we have to fight. Anyway, give thanks, Virgin. Yeah, man. Give yes. thanks for the opportunity. And we, are we not tap for light up, you know? 24th. 24th of yeah, November. November. We're not tap for light up. All right, give thanks. Yeah, man. Yes, yeah. give thanks. That was Devon Taylor talking about what transpired at the St. Anne's Courthouse this morning as it relates to the Don's River, Little Don's River Beach that was locked to keep out the old nigga them half of the beach because them want to them, them big friend to take it over to still keep out the Jamaican people half of the beach because that is a them colonizing the beaches around Jamaica. That is what them doing, colonizing the beaches for them friend and them white friend them are coming from foreign with them called tourists. Is that them I do? You know, last night, we, as we are talking about that, remember the 500 truckload of sand. <laughs> Every time I hear this thing, I have to laugh, you know. Can any listener remember that 500 truckload of sand was taken from a beach, I think it was in Trelawney, and you never hear KKM about it again. 500, you know what it means to take even five truckload of sand from a beach? Not to mention 500, 500 truckload. I know I will pop people the first time I hear about this, and I'm not making no mischief. Five, it was reported that 500 truckload of sand was taken from a beach. No, I put it to you that that sand was carried to a place where they was building hotels and it never have no beach. So they have to go make a, a false beach to secure themselves as a beach and sun and sea resort. And no one, no one was arrested. No one was charged for it. That is, that is the heights of criminality. Heights of criminality. This is the stepping razor. Okay, so, I can see if I can work this. The year 2008, and a shocking crime unfolded that sent shockwaves throughout the entire country of Jamaica. On that fateful Sunday, July 20th, Jamaicans woke up to a bewildering realization. The beach in Trelawney had vanished, stolen right from under their noses. The audacity and the mysterious nature of this incident left the nation perplexed. And to this day, the truth remains elusive. Now, there's a thriving black market for a white sand. It is used in bunkers and golf courses, mortar and cement for swimming pools, and in the production of a variety of products that includes phone screens. Sand is a limited resource, and commercially viable sand is in short supply. So sand is being stolen and smuggled around the globe. It is so valuable, people are willing to die to obtain it. But contrary to what one might assume, it wasn't just a small portion of sand that had gone missing. In fact, Several hundreds of tons of pristine white sand were meticulously removed from the Coral Spring Beach, a project in the Trelawney Parish. The audacious culprits behind this ice managed to execute their plan flawlessly, leaving no trace of their identity behind. The magnitude of the crime was further amplified by the lack of progress in the investigation. Despite the public outcry and intense scrutiny, no arrests were made. 
and the entire inquiry was eventually abandoned. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, responsible for upholding law and order, found themselves deeply embarrassed by their inability to solve this puzzling case. The prevailing belief at the time was that the stolen sand had been illicitly sold to rival resorts, but without concrete evidence, the theft triggered a massive political controversy. The Jamaica Labour Party-led government faced immense pressure and accusations of a cover-up by the opposition People's National Party. The PNP demanded a thorough investigation into what they deemed to be the steal of the century. Even the then Deputy Commissioner, Mark Shields, acknowledged the complexity of the scheme in an interview with the BBC. He revealed the intricate layers involved, including the receivers of the stolen sand, the orchestrators of the operation, and the disturbing possibility of collusion between some police officers and the sand movers. The case had taken on a disturbing twist, as the very authorities entrusted with maintaining law and order were suspected of being complicit in the crime. To comprehend the magnitude of this audacious heist, one must consider the sheer volume of sand that disappeared. It is estimated that approximately 500 truckloads of sand were covertly removed from the Coral Spring Beach. Astonishingly, 15 years later, there are still no leads on the whereabouts of the stolen sand, nor have any suspects been apprehended. The perplexing nature of the crime and the subsequent lack of resolution ensure that this incident captured international attention. The theft of an entire beach became a subject of intrigue and captivated the world's imagination. Such was its impact that the incident even found its way into the popular Ripley's Believe It or Not comics later that year. All right, so I hope you've been hearing it. You hear it, Chien? Tell me if you hear it good enough. Yes, yeah. man, loud and clear, man. All right, so for those of you who don't believe what I say, it's a 500 chocolate of sand get moved from a beach and up to this day, no government, no, no police, no nothing can tell me where happened, who do it, where them carry it go. And you tell me, say, no, something, something goes up. Something goes so you mean, when I say something goes so you mean, say, nobody don't know, a joke business. A joke business. It take man to dig the sand and chew in on the chuck. It's a company supply the chuck them with the driver them. You have people who did want the sun and all these things. Yet still, years after, we are here say, everything go cool. That is the end of that. One whole beach missing. You know, you don't want them put it in a Ripley, believe it or not. Yeah, it was an international thing. <laughs> it was either that ugly that Jamaica that could happen. Ugly that Jamaica that could happen. And when none of them attack, this and attack, that and attack, that. And we have many more things you mention to where uh, them do start scratch the surface of corruption and madness and craziness we go on inside of this country. Yes. And we ask the question, who are the culprits that is doing these things continuously? All them guns with them take from half of the wharf. How do we know that those guns don't go back to the people them where the gun them was registered to? Because I still wrap my head around it. How come a man find a, a container? With woolly pa gun pan the wharf. And him call the newspaper, call the, the media to take picture and then give statement out of the wharf. That means that the man could all stand up there and watch all of this. The man who the gun come to could all stand up there and watch all of this unfold. And him just a smile and vex him way because I say, the money gone down the drain. And I know little, little guy do these things. It's either a, a drugs man, man who are holding for money, can buy so much gun, or one of those private sector men who decide to them go make the thing unstable, that them can't do certain things I don't know. And the gun them is in the hands of the police. Uh, yes, <laughs> well, I believe what the politician. Where the hell? 
is these guns. Where the hell is these drugs? These cocaine that them find that are the outer Rakabesa. Where the cocaine they we know where the money they with them find. Because them did start watch some of it with the SSL until someone come in and trip in and say, all right, we'll give back the people their money. That let them off for the, <laughs> I tell you. We're going to start with the female names. Njiri. Njiri. N-J-E-R-I. Njiri. Means anointed. Nika. Nika. N-N-E-K-A. We give them names already now. We give them names already. I don't know. <laughs> Nika. N-N-E-K-A. Nika. Means tender. Tender. Noni, N O N I, Noni. Noni means gift of God. And Sadio, Sadio, S A D I O, Sadio, means pure, pure. So that's Njiri, N J E R I, means anointed. And Nika, N N E K A, Nika means tender. Noni, N O N I, means gift of God. And Sadio, S-A-D-I-O, Sadio means pure. Male, Kala, Kala, K-A-L-A, Kala. Kala means tall. Kala means tall. Marika, Marika, M-O-R-I-K-A, Marika. Marika means curious, curious. Kashka, Kashka, K-A-S-H-K-A, Kashka. Means friendly and I former I F O M A I former means lasting friend, lasting friend. So that's color, tall, Marika M O R I K means curious, Kashka K A S H K A means friendly and I former I F O M A I former means lasting friend. Everyone want to tell you that. Almost most of most have heard know about this thing that is going on in uh, the parliament with the speaker of the house about a car that she never give account for with certain things, you know them way really. so the 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 when name Golden yesterday them walk out of the house and say she must come off of the bench until them can clear it up. Well, today, Marisa Philibert, Speaker of the House, and Member of Parliament for Social Army, she resigned. She resigned. She decides that she'll go resign because it really damaged her reputation and she just resigned. So why oh, you know that? Marisa Philibert, Speaker of the House, Member of Parliament for South Chulani resign. That will lead to our next conversation again. One thing lead to the next. There's and never, Mota, yeah? she resign as Speaker of the House and also as Member of Parliament. I don't know what I'm I never said that. Yeah, man, but I just make it clear that at the boat position she resigned yeah, man, she from. Yeah, she resigned from Speaker of the House and a Member of Parliament for South Chulani. Because she said, I represent John Spoil up already. And even though she keep telling them, say, she honestly didn't remember. And I know those things can happen still, but if you get concession because he's a member of parliament and a politician, those things, you can't forget them. You know, see? And like me, sometimes you don't remember to pay <laughs> my water rate, how I like bill. And then, it's not, and that was the light bill, the flow bill. Them people have a way to remind you, you know. Them just slow down your internet service, you know. And you there, I wonder, oh, your computer gets so slow. I wonder if too much load upon it. And you say, but wait, it's too slow, Rasta. And you call them, you know, you know, they tell you, say, oh, your, your bill gone two days over. <laughs> so, me know, say, from now on, and that me I watch it from last year. Anytime I see the internet thing go down, I have to check what time of the month it is. Yeah, I have to check it. 
the, the, the life is a different thing. Them lock off where they want to lock off, whether, you, whether you're OB or not, them just choose to lock off where they want to lock off. This lady, I don't know, I don't know her, I don't know who she be. Them say, shall they, member of parliament and shall they speak at the house. I mean, she shall plead her cause. And very, very, she, she never ever sure, like say, she care where, um, golden did I say. She just I said, why she do the thing and, it's like, do what I want to do then, because me don't tell you, say, me never remember. And them say, if you, if you claim, say, you don't know the law, don't, that don't absolve you from the law. Yes. What them call ignorance of the law. If it's not ignorance, shall plead, shall plead not remembering. But that is what is happening today. Yes, she has resigned from the Speaker of the House and Member of Parliament. So, dear, that is that. We we'll go back to normal programming. There's something weird. <laughs> hey, them people are not easy, you know. Them people are not easy at all. Apart from them, I talk about gender neutral. Means, say, uh, gender neutral means, say, uh, there's neither boys nor girls. Because, boy, if you want to be a girl, you can just say you're a girl and you're accepted. And if you want to be a boy, you can just, as a girl, you just see as a boy, and you're accepted. Well, the trend now is that a whole heap of people is now saying that I'm a certain kind of animal. <laughs> I don't know if I did, yeah, I, I, I mentioned it more than one time, you know. I like why I go to school with a litter. You know, that thing where cat use. And I'm in the classroom, and the teacher said, can bring a litter inside it, so. And him start to meow, meow. And the teacher said, no, you can't do that. And him carry, him family, actually, carry the teacher go to court. And she, and him win. Say, so I discriminate against the cat. <laughs> well, you know what I know? Thousands of people are identifying as dogs. You hear that? Them identifying as dogs. Well, them cats have a barking howling convention in Germany, Berlin. No, can go so do. <laughs> no, the white people are really. No, some can go so. Somebody called that to me that fake news, Mary. You no, know, please, because me know you have people now. I say them is when them are fifty, them say them are fourteen. And you have to just accept that I'm 14. A 50-year-old man I come to you and say he's 14. It's a terrible thing. But now you have people, thousands of people are gathered, and a bark and a owl at a convention. Clear me that them is really dog. And you must accept them as dog. Uh, I tell you, that thing, that thing, it, it, it really gets a messy way. I don't know how the, the, the young people them know going to adapt to this world that we see moving towards me. I don't know how them going to adapt to it because everything is not nothing again and nothing is everything. And you can't lick against it. A man who you know says a man come to you the next day and say he's a woman and you have to accept him as a woman. That is total madness. That's something where, is, I, I, I mean, there's no word to describe that damage to that brain. And now people are run up and along the place and I go, whoa, 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 and I walk to the mad dog. The informative information presented in this video is motivational and is positively aimed at inspiring, educating and entertaining the viewers with the cutting edge of critical reasoning. If you enjoy the contents on the Black Radar YouTube channel, please consider subscribing to show your support.